another book in the Committee Thanksgiving book. One is A Feast for Mouth, A Thanksgiving Tale, and the author is Judy Cotts. Okay, and we're going to meet this little guy. His name is just Mouse. And here he is inside his little home. This is a picture on the cover page. He's sitting on, do you recognize that with the little dots on it? A dice with his chair. This is tiny like a mouse, right? This used to be a spool of thread and now it's empty, but it makes a perfect wooden table. Uh, this looks like a box that had some tea in it. He has a table for his pictures and candle and he even has a tiny little hat hat um, posted uh, coat tree. I can't think of the words. And he has his hat on it. So let's meet this little guy. After Thanksgiving, Dinner Mouse crept out of his hidey hole and looked around. Now, can you see him? Yeah, he's in a, what we would call a cuckoo clock. Usually the cuckoo bird pops out there at certain times and says cuckoo, cuckoo on the hour. And he says cuckoo for how many times the hour is. Like if it's one o'clock, he'd go cuckoo and then go back in. If it was two o'clock, he'd go cuckoo, cuckoo and then go back in. And he only comes out every now and then. Well, the mouse is living inside the clock. So when the cuckoo isn't cuckooing, <laughs> making his sound, the mouse can peep out. This looks like an old-fashioned German clock with little characters that kind of march around too at the hour. There's doors that open, a door that opens on this side, and these little characters are on like a turntable and they march across and around the corner. And these are the pendulums and the thing that helps keep the, the things that keep the clock going. Anyway, enough about clocks. That is where our mouse lives. And he's peeking out after Thanksgiving, looking around to see if there's any food left because he loves to find some food, right? The house was quiet. Dad was snoozing in his chair with his book. You'll see a picture of him in a minute, just kind of snoozing away. And Mom was too. She was dozing in front of the TV. And outside, the kids played football in the crisp yellow leaves. It's this fall, right, when Thanksgiving is and they're playing in the leaves. The cat was curled up by the fire, sitting nice and warm. He yawned, and stretched his stripy tail and closed his greeny eyes and went to sleep. So here's our picture. Let's start over here. Here's Dad sleeping. Here's Mouse peeking around to see what he can see. You can see he has glasses, our little mouse. He's looking up saying, oh, he's asleep, and he sees the mom on the couch. We can't see her in this picture. The TV's on, and there's the cat yawning in front of this little fire in the little stove there. And this cat's going to sleep, too. Everybody was tired after their dinner. Well, Mouse scampered up the tablecloth, pushed with his little mouse feet, and he looked at the table. <gasps> Oh, Thanksgiving leftovers were still on the table. So much to eat. And it looks like when they finished their meal, they didn't clean up. They were like tired and it was still a nice day out. So the kids went out and the mom and dad took a nap and the cat and everybody. And they just left their leftovers on the table. But we'll get them later. There's a name places. They have like old turkey decorations that have like mom, dad's name on them and grandma and grandpa pretty tablecloth and decoration, but you can see there's some food scattered here and there. And where's our little mouse in that picture? There he is, right there. He's looking around like, oh, for a tiny little mouse, those were some pretty, pretty big things to look at, right? Mouse saw a teensy tiny toothsome green pea all by itself under a plate. Give thanks, he thought, one will be a fe feast for me. You know, he's just a little mouse. One pea is a pretty big deal, right? So Mouse rolled the pea across the tablecloth and to take it back to his little hidey hole. But just as he was getting ready to walk away with the pea, his eyes were bigger than his stomach. 
Now, that's an expression that means your stomach may be getting full or will be getting full, but your eyes see some food that looks yummy and you think, I can eat some more, I can eat some more because you're looking at it and you're maybe smelling it too and you're thinking, that looks delicious. I just had all of this to eat, but I think I'll eat one more thing, you know? Sometimes we do that. But let's see what happens to Mouse. So his eyes were bigger than his stomach, so to speak. He saw six leftover cranberries. Mm. They were glowing like rubies. That's a pretty red stone on it. They were on a glowing, glowing like rubies on a silver saucer. I'll just take one, he said to himself. One is a feast for me. So he balanced one cranberry on top of the pea and started once again across the table to his hidey hole. So there he is, climbing away with his pea. Can you see him there with a little pea in his hand? And he's about to head back to the hidey hole and he's climbing over the rolls to get there. And he glances across the table and he sees those six red, juicy looking cranberries. And so he scampers over and grabs one. So what he does is he balances it on top of his pea. Pretty clever, huh? There's the pea, there's the cranberry. And he's about to go back to his hidey hole, and what does he see? Yes, you know what those are? One, two, three, black olives. Mmm, he thought those looked so yummy. They're shiny and black. I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. And so he put the olive on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and carried the tidbits across the table. So oh, you saw most of the picture. You can see that it's a plate with some other things on it too. We're going to talk about those carrots in just a minute. Because he then saw the carrot sticks next to the olives and they looked crunchy and munchy and pretty color of orange. And he said, I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. So he stuck one carrot stick into the hole in the olive. Olives often have a hole in them if the pit in the olive has been taken out. So he stuffed the carrot stick into the hole in the olive. He balanced both the olive and carrot on top of the cranberry, on top of the, remember what was the first thing he found? On top of the pea, right. And he started back to his hidey hole. Here he is on the table. There's one of those name places and you can't see real well. He's, he, you can see it just a little bit through here. It's like you can see the pea, but his, the cup and the candle are kind of blocking him as he's running across the table with his pile of goodies. Well, he was making his way across the table when he saw the mashed potatoes. Oh my goodness, mashed potatoes. There was just one scoop left on the plate. Now, how do you scoop up mashed potatoes and carry it on top of all of that? He didn't think that was going to work, so he thought, I'll just take the plate. That'll be easier, Mouse thought. What a feast I will have. So he balanced the plate of potatoes on top of the carrot stick, in the hole in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. Right. And Mouse started on across the table. Oh my goodness. Now he's pretty good at this, isn't he? Doot, 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 doot. And there's the mashed potatoes. And there's the decoration on the table of a pilgrim man and a pilgrim lady. I have something like that at my house. And then he saw the gravy, brown and luscious. Mm. It was in a silver gravy boat. Gravy for the mashed potatoes, he thought. I must have that for my feast. And he balanced the gravy boat on top of the mashed potatoes. How did he do that? On top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick stuck in the olive, on top of the cranberries, on top of the pea. And he started off. And there he is. He is like a juggler almost, isn't he? Here he is with all his pea, cranberry, carrot stick, olive, mashed potato plate, and a gravy boat, and they're kind of a little cro crooked, but he's balancing them just right. And then guess what? He spotted the pumpkin pie. Mm. 
One slice of pie, brown and dimpled with a collar of fluffy whipped cream. <gasps> yes, he has that too. So he balanced the pie on top of the gravy boat, on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick stuck in the olive. And that was on top of the cranberry on top of the pea. And he started off across the table. So here he is, Mr. Mr. Mouse. You can see some of the picture here on the table and there's that pie that looks so yummy. He's already got this balancing act going on and now he's gonna grab that pie too. Oh my goodness. Well, when he got the pie on top of his his pile that he was balancing with one hand, I might add. Mouse caught, the, the pie slid and he caught this pie just in time and he was balancing everything. Mouse bob, bobbed and bobbled. That means he was holding it and it was like, whoa, whoa, ooh, ooh, this way, that way, moving around just to keep everything balanced. And he was good at it. And he was moving his way across the tablecloth to his hidey hole when, what do you think, happened. No, he didn't drop it at that point. He was getting closer to the edge of the table, but he was so busy balancing, he didn't see someone that was creeping and creeping closer and closer to the table. <gasps> Who was that? Mm, the mouse woke up. The mouse woke up. The cat woke up <laughs> and heard the mouse. In fact, maybe the, maybe the mouse woke the cat up. And here he is balancing this amazing pile of food that we've just been talking about. The cat sneaked in. But do you think he could see the cat? No, he's too busy. Couldn't see that cat. He's too busy watching up above and balancing and bobbing and the whole bit. Well, but Mouse wasn't even looking at the cat or the edge of the table. He was looking at... <gasps> He hadn't seen the turkey. Oh my goodness, he loved turkey. Brown and juicy, surrounded with parsley. Much of the turkey was gone, but there was enough left for a mouse feast, maybe even two. I'll just add that, thought Mouse. Just one more thing. And he carefully placed the turkey platter on the very top of his pile. Can you believe it? And on, it was on top of the pie, on top of the gravy, on top of the mashed potatoes. Let's look at the picture. See this big, big tall thing. On top of the mashed potatoes, and the mashed potatoes were on top of the carrot stick stuck in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the... P. Oh my goodness, if I was balancing that, I wouldn't see a cat coming either, would, would you? Nope. But when he got to the edge of the table, as he was running to his hidey hole, there at the edge of the table were two green eyes. Whoa. Whoa, looking right at him. See? There he is balancing, and now he gets a better perspective, and he sees that cat. <gasps> what do you think he did? Do you think he said, here, kitty, kitty? <laughs> well, when he saw the cat, greedy-eyed and hungry, looking at him and clawing up the tablecloth, Mouse skidded to a stop. And here he's been balancing like this. And then he sees the cat and he goes, Arr! Now, when you stop quickly, what do you think might happen? You're right. The turkey wibbled and wobbled and slid and slipped. And he tried to balance a little bit, dancing on his feet to balance it. He even did a pirouette, meaning he turned around like, whoa, trying to catch, keep it up in the air like a ballerina or a platter spinner, but it was too hard. At this point, off slid the turkey, whoosh, 
and the, guess where the turkey plate landed? Plop! Right on Cat. Right on Cat! And Cat didn't like that, so he went, meow! And he jumped off the table. And all the food you can see is flying everywhere. The plate, the spoon, the that was on the table already is next to it, but all the food is flying in the air as the cat runs away. And the mouse is running away too. Now you can get a better picture of what a mess it was. The dad slept through the whole thing. But when these dishes and pieces of silverware and bowls and plates, there's little mouse running, running, running fast as he can. When all that fell on the floor, that woke up the mom. Down crashed the pumpkin pie in the boat with the gravy. Down crashed the mashed potatoes with a clatter that woke mom. Down fell the carrot stick, still impaled in the olive. Down went the cranberry, which rolled, leaving a red track of juice across the tablecloth. And down went the pea, that first pea that he found and thought that would be enough. Hmm. But then he just kept adding more things, didn't he? Well, now it's all caterwumpus off the table, rolling onto the floor. And off scampered Mouse, quick as a bandit, back to his hidey hole, ahead of Cat. So here's a picture I just showed you. And you can see, you can see the cranberry, you can see the pea. You can see some of the other dishes and foods on the floor. And what do you think happened next when the mom woke up? Do you think she knew it was the mouse that had been balancing that and carrying it around? Hmm. Well, mouse had already run back to his hole, so she didn't see any mouse. But he huddled back in his little hidey hole and he peeked out. And he had been running so fast to get away from that cat that his heart was going, ooh, pitter-pattering in his chest. And he was like, <laughs> and there he is peeking out of the, the clock and thinking, oh my goodness what's happening and look what happened there's the mom and she's shooing the cat with a broom she thought the cat did it she thought the cat was climbing the table to try to get the food and that he was the naughty one hmm she brought the broom down on the stripy green-eyed cat and said bad kitty shouted mom outside and she swept the cat out the door the poor kitty i mean he was involved but he didn't cause everything, did he? But at the same time, we don't want either one of them to get hurt, right? Mouse looked around. His whiskers were trembling with fright. No Thanksgiving feast for me, he thought. But just then, in the corner, he spotted a pea. Hmm. On the floor, I was looking for it before. In the corner he found the pea as he was peeking out the hidey hole and the cat was going outside and he grabbed it and he brought it back up one teensy tiny round and toothsome green and luscious pea give thanks one is a feast for me he said he brought it back to his little house and there he is with a knife and a fork and that pea looks like a big uh, a big meal doesn't it for a tiny mouse and he realizes that one pea is a feast for him and he's thankful on his Thanksgiving feast day <laughs> and that's the end there he is inside that house we saw on the first first page this page we can see his laundry hanging on a clothesline and a little ladder inside <laughs> well it after all he, he, he did have a nice Thanksgiving didn't he pretty adventurous but it was a nice one do you think there's a lesson to learn in that story? What do you think the mouse learned? Maybe you can talk about that to your mom and dad or whoever is listening to this. And you can figure out a good lesson from cute little mouse. And one is a feast for a mouse. For mouse, I should say. Okay? See you later. Bye.